In this uh, lecture uh, 4 for um, shallow foundation bearing capacity and overall lecture 14, we will discuss about the available various uh, bearing capacity theories for by which we can determine the bearing capacity of foundation. And we have I have already discussed about the Tazaki's bearing capacity theory. Now, this class we will discuss the others bearing capacity theories and then we will compare their results. Now, uh, I have already discussed about the Tazaki's bearing capacity theory. This is the final form of the bearing capacity which is C n c uh, gamma d f n q plus half gamma b n gamma. And here we can see that we have two uh, gamma values. So, these gamma values is representing the soil which is above the base of the foundation and this gamma value representing the soil which is below the base of the foundation. And another thing that when we are talking about the influence zone of the bearing capacity, then we are taking the influence zone from the base of the footing up to the B or width of the footing. That means, if we have a footing here, so this is the ground surface. So, if this is the d f, d f is the depth of the foundation up to the base of the footing. Then the influence zone, influence zones means the zone up to which we have we, the stress as the influence into the soil. So, and then that zone soil we have to consider during our bearing capacity calculation. That means, the properties that we are get uh, using, then we have to use the properties up to that zone. And so, that means, here the influence zone generally for the bearing capacity calculation, we consider up to the B, where B is the width of the footing. So, from the base of the footing up to the B value. So, that is why in the water table effect also that I discussed in the last class that we consider the water table effect up to the depth B from the base of the footing. If the water table location is greater than that uh, zone, then we do not consider the water table effect into the bearing capacity equation. So, here that is why so, that means, this is the first gamma term is the gamma with the base above the base of the soil and uh, the second gamma term is the below the base of the soil and these n c, n q, n gamma are the bearing capacity factor and we can determine this bearing capacity factor with the help of this equation or or we can determine from this chart also. This chart are this chart is developed from these the, those equations only. So, and then we discuss about the shape effect on the Tazaki's bearing capacity expression. Then, then we discuss about the water table effect. Now, if the water table is above the base of the foundation, then this is the expression that we are using. And if the water table below the base of the foundation, then we are using these expressions. So, these things I have discussed. Now, keep in mind that if the water table is above the uh, uh, base of the foundation and at the ground surface, then both the gamma will be gamma bar if it is above the ground surface and uh, above the ground um, base of the footing at the ground surface. Now, if the foundation or, or, or if the water table is at the base of the foundation, then the gamma of this uh, second term gamma will be the gamma or gamma bulk and the this, this third term gamma that will be the gamma sub, because that is below the water table. So, I will solve one problem on this water table effect, then you will find that how we can incorporate the water table effect in the bearing capacity expression. In another way that when you are talking about the 
Tazak is bearing capacity uh, expression. So, we have the final expression, it has three terms. Though the term 1, this is the contribution due to the cohesion, the term 2, this is the contribution due to the surcharge, and the term 3, this is the contribution due to the weight of the soil. So, these are the three contributions that we are getting and these things we have discussed when we discuss about the passive pressure resistance for the, because we are getting the resistance because of three contributions. One is because of the surcharge, one is because of the cohesion, another is because of the weight of the soil. So, when the Tazak is bearing capacity equation, it has uh, the limitation that it can only be used if your depth of the foundation is less than or equal to the width of the foundation. So, keeping in mind the Skempton 1951 uh, proposed ultimate bearing capacity equation or theory for only case look, uh, clay soil. So, that means, here 5 value is 0 and we are getting the net ultimate. So, that is the net ultimate. So, if the phi value is equal to 0, so n q will be 1 and n gamma value will be 0. So, our q net ultimate will be C u n c as it is the phi 0. So, you are using C u undrain cohesion and this n c is the bearing capacity factor and this, but the advantage of this uh, theory that it can be used for any depth. So, because in previous one Tazaki's theory is applicable for the shallow depth if the depth of the foundation is less than equal to b, but it can be used for the any depth, but the, this n c value will change depending upon the depth that we are using and the type of footing. For the rectangular footing, we have these two equation. So, 1 d f by b less than equal to 2.5, then we have this equation and if the less uh, uh, d f by b is greater than 2.5, then we have these equations. So, these equations where we can get the bearing capacity factor n c and that we can use for the, uh, the equation which is given by the uh, scheme term. So, but this analysis is valid for any value of d f by b. So, next uh, analysis is proposed by the mayor of where the this is also another advantage that each analysis we can use for any depth and this is uh, for the so we can use for the uh, this analysis and another uh, advantage is that because in case of mayor of analysis the n c n q n gamma that depends on the roughness of the footing depth of the footing and the shape of the footing and the inclination of the loading in addition to the angle of shearing resistance phi. So, that means, in the uh, bearing capacity factor in case of Tazaki, it is function of phi, but here this is a function of I mean other factors are also included along with this bearing capacity factor. So, which includes the inclination uh, uh, of the load, which include the roughness of the base of the foundation, we include the shape of the footing, which include the depth of the footing. So, now you can see that here also similar uh, uh, failure, similar type of failure surface assumption is considered. So, here if you look at this um, uh, figure, here the right side is given the mayor of failure surface and the uh, left side is given the Tazaki's failure surface. So, this side is the Tazaki, this side is the mayor of and the, you, you can see that that in case of uh, mayor of in case of Tazaki this angle the internal uh, angle was phi, but the mayor of is given this is 45 plus phi by 2. And here another important thing is that the Tazaki is bearing capacity um, uh, theory the failure surface is extended up to base of the footing. So, that is why the contribution of this zone above the base of the footing is not considered, but whereas in the mayor of uh, bearing capacity theory the failure surface is extended up to the surface of the up to the ground surface. So, here that is why the contribution due to the soil above the base of the footing is also incorporated into the analysis. So, that is why here also it has three zones. So, zone 
uh, 1 A B D is the elastic zone, then zone 2 B D G is the zone of radial shear like the previous one, uh, the Stadzak is bearing capacity uh, theory and the zone 3, this zone this is B G H M is the zone of mixed shear in which shear var uh, varies between radial shear to the planar shear. So, that is why here this is the contribution that we are getting from the uh, soil above the base is also incorporated. And there is a value beta that value increases with an increase of d f and it equal to 90 degree for the deep foundation. So, in case of deep foundation this weight value will be will increase and it will it will it will close to 90 degree. So, the after uh, analyzing this uh, failure surface then Mehra uh, proposed uh, these equation where similar type of uh, bearing capacity factor n c n q n gamma, but it has a different value. So, that means here ultimately final form of Mehrab equation is this one. So, here some S C D C I C S Q D Q I Q and S gamma D gamma I gamma these are incorporated along with the N C N Q N gamma. So, these are the factors. So, these are the so S denotes the shape factor S C means this is the shape factor for N C and then D denotes the depth factor i is the inclination factor. So, the here the in, in Tazaki's uh, theory the load is is vertical and but here load can be inclined also. So, that inclination uh, effect is also included in this equation. So, along with the depth effect and shape effect and then obviously, n c is the function of phi. So, here n c, n q and n gamma can be determined by using these equations. So, now for the strip footing this s c s q s gamma is equal to 1 for strip footing. Now, for uh, so, Tazaki has uh, Meharov has suggested the uh, uh, this s c s d and i uh, corrections. So, these are the factors. So, this is the shape factor S c S q and S gamma. So, this S c we can determine by using these equation. So, for any phi and for this two if it is phi greater than 10 degree if it is phi equal to equal to 0 degree, but if in between that then we have to linearly interpolate the value if the phi value is in between 0 to 10 degree. Similarly, for the depth factor and then for the inclination factors. Here, this alpha value is the angle the load is making, this is the direction of the loading, this r is the direction of the loading and it which alpha value, that means this load is making with the vertical angle. So, this is the alpha. So, this is and similarly, k p value is given tan square 45 degree plus phi by 2. So, uh, this is the things that I have mentioned. It is the form with the, this alpha value is making the angle with the vertical. Down the next, uh, uh, so based on the, these equations, Mayarov is also presented one one uh, table. So where you can see if phi value is equal to zero, as per the Mayarov, n c is 5.14. N q equal to 1 and N gamma equal to 0, but in case of Tazaki N c was 5.7. So, that is why as the we are talking about the way the roughness effect is is inco incorporated. So, this N c value is 1.5.14 is for the smooth footing and if it is 5.7 if it is a rough footing that means base is rough then 5.7, if base is smooth then 5.14 and then these are the other factors for different phi. So, phi value is in degree. So, similarly value for the other phi values. So, this the uh, bearing capacity factors. Next one that we are talking about that eccentrically loaded foundation. So, that means we have discussed uh, about the incline loading. So, uh, now, but if the in loading is inclined, still the point of application of the load is at the center. But if the loading is not at the center, it is 
some away from the center, then how we will incorporate that thing into the bearing capacity expression. So, suppose here instead of uh, only loading, you are applying a moment into the foundation. So, suppose this is your foundation, this is the center. center. So, we are applying a say moment in this direction, if it is a one way moment. So, this moment is acting suppose m. Now, the loading, the equivalent loading is not the uh, acting in the center. So, it is acting somewhere away from the center. So, that is why this loading is that means, this things is converted like that, that your moment loading is acting, suppose this is the center line of the foundation. So, your loading is acting, if it is one way, then it is acting here. So, with an value of say E x, if this is x and this is y. Okay? So, this and the loading is acting here. So, that means, E x I can determine with the value of m by q. So, in the section, if I take the foundation section, then, so this is the center line of the foundation, then your loading q is acting here with an distance of E x. So, because of that, what will happen? That your now the your foundation will be loaded not uniformly. It will be loaded like this, because here we are, your load is acting away from the center. So, it is not the stress distribution below the uh, so, uh, foundation is not uniform. Suppose, if it is your foundation is loaded Suppose, if this is the foundation, it is loaded at the center, then your stress distribution will be more or less uniform, because you have the stress distribution like this. So, this is the your assumed stress distribution, but if the it is loaded like this, if this is the center line and if it is loaded, then more stress will act in this side compared to this. So, in that case, the stress distribution will be like this. Okay? So, that means, here the side where the loading is acting, there will be more stress and the opposite side there will be less stress. So, that and if it is the value of E x. Now, there is a possibility that here this your stress distribution if the E x value if you further increase the E x value from the if you increase the distance of the E x value from the center, then what will happen? Your stress in the other side will reduce. Now, there is a possibility that if you further increase the say suppose E x value, then your stress may be like this also. So, that means, here it is positive and here it is negative. So, that means, this zone there will be a tension, which is not recommended for any design. The reason is that is tension means that your foundation is not with the contact with the soil. So, that means, it is lifted, is not it? So, that is why that is not recommended. So, that is why we have to design our foundation such that there should not be any tension in the foundation. So, that means, if there is a tension, there will be a separation between the soil and the foundation. So, foundation there will be a lift up. So, that is not recommended. So, that is why the E x value that will be 
there should be a limit of the E x value such that your stress on the other side is not negative. So, that means that you your the maximum recommended stress diagram can be this one, where your stress is this is 0 and this is the if this is the q max and this one the q mean and q mean can be 0, but q mean cannot be negative. So, here your q is uniform q uh, this is uniform if it is centrally loaded. So, that is why this is your q max and this is your q mean. So, q mean cannot be negative. So, this is the limiting condition. So, this limiting condition is achieved if your E value is equal to B by 6. Okay? So, that is why we can say that any condition your E x cannot be your E x cannot be greater than B by 6. So, that means, from here if this is the B value width of the foundation, if this is the B value. So, your E x should, uh, should be within this side. So, from here it should be the B by 6 and from here also it should be the b by c it cannot go b by 6 beyond the b by 6 in any side. So, that means, it should be within the one middle one third of the foundation. So, this is the one way moment and now if we apply a moment in both the directions. So, that means, the if we apply the moment this direction in if apply the moment in this direction also. So, this is the moment m x, this is the m y. So, that means, here instead of this point, you are now footing uh, the load will act here. So, this will be the E x and this will be the E y, but the condition is remain same. So, here E y also we can get this is the m y divided by q and this then this will be the m x by q. So, that means, here q is now acting here if it is two way moment. So, now and again that your E y cannot be greater than your b by 6 or l by 6. If the square footing then b is equal to l and if it is rectangular footing, so it is l by 6. So, that means, it cannot be greater than L by 6 also. So, these conditions we have to satisfy if, if it is the eccentrically loaded foundation. So, keep in mind that your, your E value E x or E, e y such that it should be within this zone. So, that is the recommended zone. So, this value is the this is the this is B by 6, this side also b by 6, this one is l by 6, this one is l by 6, if it is l and this one is equal to b. So, this means the middle one third of the footing your loading should be applied within this zone. If you apply beyond this zone, your eccentricity value greater than this uh, b by 6 or l by 6, then there will be tension will develop in the foundation, there will be separation which is not recommended. So, these are the all information that I am giving for the eccentrically loaded foundation. So, another thing is that because of this loading, so your effective width of the foundation or effective length of the foundation that will reduce. So, so, now if your effective length or effective width of the foundation is redu uh, reduced, then how we calculate that effective length and width of the foundation. So, now this is the for the stiff footing B dash is your this is the area which is basically effective now because your footing is not in the center. If it is center, 
then your b is equal to b and l is equal to l because total area is effectively uh, you are using the total area but if your it is loaded in one side then your effective area that will reduce so this is the effective area because your load is in acting here so that's why the b dash we can determine by b minus 2 ex and l dash we can determine my l minus 2 ey and final effective area of footing a dash you will be b dash into l dash and then q u will be q, uh, capital q u will be q into a dash and then uh, the based on that the next theory that is uh, developed is that uh, henson bearing capacity theory which is uh, which is giving better results if it is cohesive soil compared to the tazaki's equation so now if it is phi is equal to 0 then this is the expression again this sc dc ic all are the shape factor depth factor and inclination factor for the nc and similar to nq and the uh n gamma so these are the nc nq the nc and nq they are uh, the mayor of recommended uh, nc nq are using but n gamma expression is different compared to the mayor of now uh, this is the table of n n gamma is given because nq and nc is the same as the mayor of uh, table but the n gamma value is different now here the correction factors or the uh, factors for in bearing capacity equations also different so here uh, if it is in eccentrically loaded footing then instead of b it will be b dash it will be l dash so if it is eccentrically loaded so this will be also l dash this will be b dash l dash then this will be the b dash so all the b and l will be converted to your b dash and l dash so this is the b dash and so these are the value this is for phi equal to not equal to 0 and this is for phi equal to 0 but for stiff footing this value is 1 so these are the all the factor because these factors uh, these tables you have to use during the bearing capacity calculation and then similarly uh, this is the value for the ic inclination factor and then this is a dash is the effective area and ca is the base adhesion because here this adhesion uh, effect is incorporated so as i mentioned in the last class that adhesion basically alpha into c that is equal to adhesion so adhesion alpha if it is between soil to soil the alpha value will be 1 and but if it is in other material because your foundation is the different material so this value this alpha value varies from 0.6 to 1 and then the base cohesion c value so this is the cohesion so this alpha value 0.6 to 1 which is recommended and then we can use these inclination factors and the other factors so the so these are the uh, uh, others bearing capacity theories those we use for the bearing capacity calculation so in the next class i will discuss uh, uh, our basic bearing capacity theory and our india standard is code recommendation that how we can calculate the bearing capacity by using the is code and then we will try to compare these results the and will show how they are varying each other in the next class thank you